no matter where you are in the world, tennis court is always going to be the same size. It's always going to have the same height net and it's always just going to be you and the other person in the tennis ball. So it was always a place that no matter where we were in the world, my sister, my brother and I always had a place where we could be ourselves. Hi, I'm Mikey Matson, and I'm on the Seton Hall women's tennis team. I was born in Christchurch, New Zealand. At two months old, my mum, dad and I moved to France for two years. In 2000, we moved to England where my sister was born. And then after a year there in 2001, we moved to Japan for five years where my dad finished up his rugby career. I was first introduced to tennis in Japan when I was about five years old. And even though I was only five years old, I was really competitive and hated being worse at something than someone else. When we moved to Australia, that's when my parents signed me up for academies and tournaments. And that's when I started to really kind of get the thrill for competition. The main person that kept me in the sport was my dad. It's tough being a girl when you fight a lot of those battles of you can't be strong and feminine at the same time. And I think my dad really drove home that if you love tennis, and you want to be an athlete, you can be an athlete, and you can be feminine at the same time. My dad was a professional rugby player, and he was one of the first players ever to go pro. He was in the All Blacks from 95 to 96, and that's kind of like the pinnacle of world rugby. You think it would affect how I was raised, and I think it only affected how I was raised in the athletic sense because to me, he was just my dad. He's been saying it all our lives, everything we can and want to do, we can do and we will do. He kind of was the guy that put me in the weight room and was like, you're gonna have to learn how to clean before you get to college. You're gonna have to do a push up. You have to be able to hold your own body weight. I was super, super skinny as a child and Michael was already like, I saw her on the court and to be honest, don't want to admit it to her, but like, I was like, oh my God, wow, she's like hitting the ball so hard. A lot of stereotypes need to be broken before people accept women and even myself as strong and athletic and feminine. And kind of coming home on those days and being like, I don't want to be an athlete. I don't want to be strong. I want to be skinny. I, I don't, I don't want to look the way I look, but my dad always told me that your body has a purpose and my purpose is to play tennis and in order to do that I need to look strong I need to be strong I was built up on you are strong you are feminine and you can do whatever you set your mind to we were always pushing pushing each other even back then I think when I started to get into the teens, me and Mikey were being more competitive. The first time ever that we had to play each other in a competitive environment was an international tournament. <laughs> I got a wild card into uh, junior ITF. And I had gotten a buy into the second round. I look at it and I see that I have to play this girl. And then I look who I might play next and it's like, oh, Oh my gosh. And I remember watching her singles match going, she needs to win this so she gets points, but I also don't want to play her. And then she destroyed the girl totally. I didn't know whether I was like nervous or super fired up. There were balls smacked into the roof. I was yelling at the ref to like, leave us alone because this was not just a tennis match. This was sisters playing each other. I think I almost hit someone that was in the stands. I won. Holly went off all grumpy. I storm off. Michael's crying. And I ended up bawling my eyes out on the court going like, this was the worst day ever. Then people were like, oh, well done, Holly. Like, you beat your sister. I was like, no, I lost. You don't want to see your family on the other side of the court. So I was recruited by Coach Greg 
and he, the first sort of conversation he had with me was, I'm looking for a player that doesn't break, I'm looking for a player that is strong mentally, and I'm looking for a player that wants to improve throughout all four years. <laughs> and I went, well, you're looking at her. I was like, I will work my butt off. I will go into the weight room every day if you want me. I will run around the track every day if you want me to. I will do two extra hours on the court if you want me to. I want to be here. I really underestimated the challenge that I was taking on. Doing it with my family nearly every three years on average, just going from country to country, I was like, I can do this, piece of cake. I've done it before, I can do it again. It's my sixth country, I'm fine. I mean, family is everything. We're a lot closer because the five of us were the only five that we had every time we moved to a country. There were a lot of times where I was like, I don't think this is for me. And not having a familiar face was definitely the hardest part of that move. And I found kind of my saving grace in Melody, who's now my doubles partner. Well, we both were kind of like the odd ones out because she had like a thick accent and people couldn't really understand her and I didn't speak English at all, so we were kind of like the two of us just together working on me speaking English and her like loosening her accent a little bit. The only words she could say for the first semester were yes and okay. So even though she was my saving grace for the first semester, I was like, I really have no one that I can communicate with. And when her English started getting better, we realized we had a lot of things in common. We realized that we had a lot of dreams that we wanted to fulfill. And even though they were slightly different, we wanted to do it together and as a team. Yeah, I never see them argue or fight. They're always kind of yin and yang. If there's ever a team in doubles that we know if we put together, it's going to mesh well, it's those two. Yeah, I think she's like a sister to me now, honestly. She kind of feels like family right now, like even though we're from completely different countries. She definitely got me through those tough times because we related to each other better. I remember we were playing a tournament in uh, Army West Point and her fam family actually visited and so was her sister. And I saw her sister talking to the NJIT coach and it kind of clicked and then you could see like the happiness on Mikey's face being like, hey, my family is actually like moving closer towards me. I haven't met <laughs> anyone in America that's a woman that has the same skin tone as me and has the same build as me. And I think that's a battle that I've always struggled with. But then having my sister come in for my junior year really empowered me because I was like, I am not alone now. There is someone out there that looks like me that is doing the same thing as me. A lot about her development is about accepting who you are. I know in her freshman year she struggled with like fitting in, but she embraced her differences and know that she's special.